Welcome to Get Married. I'm Colin Cowie. Vibrant, amazing, gorgeous, elegant. Yes, those words describe you, but they also describe your bridal bouquet. We'll show you how to get fabulous flowers, and I'll share one of my personal secrets for a winter wonderland wedding that's truly chic. And I'm Deanna Pappas. Ellen DeGeneres has been keeping fans across America laughing for years, but when she said I do with her longtime partner, Portia de Rossi, their flowers were serious business. We'll show you why. Get ready, it's Get Married. Love has bloomed, and now you're on the way to the wedding of your dreams. And get married.com and I are here to help with great ideas and planning tips to make your day extra special. From the ceremony to the reception, flowers are key to creating the ambience you want for your wedding. But some of the most important blooms you'll buy are the ones you'll carry down the aisle. You may not realize it, but the bridal bouquet is one of the focal points of your wedding day lock. So when you plan your ceremony and reception decor, don't forget to spend some time and effort on the design of your bouquet. The bridal flowers is the first thing most people see at a ceremony, and also it should tell a statement. It should tell a story. You want to create a bouquet that will be an accent to your stunning gown. However, it should be a reflection of you, but not overpowering. It's evolved, and now we do like smaller, tighter, more natural looking things. I look back at photos, and before it was huge, overdone bouquets that were like bigger than the bride. I'm just seeing more of a simple nosegay. It allows you to see more of the dress, it, and, and if, you, if you have a perfect texture with it, consider the texture of your, of your flower against your gown and the color. And the assortment of flowers to choose from is changing too. The bouquet trend that I've been seeing is, is a single flower. After I think a lot of these years of, of having the mix of the rose and you know four or five different flowers for different texture, a single flower wrapped beautifully and frequently now without greens where there used to be a lot more texture. But color is key as well. If your heart is set on white roses or calla lilies, a bright idea is to tie your wedding colors into the ribbon that holds your bouquet together. And for a really personalized and creative bouquet, don't be afraid to think out of the box. Maybe it's a grandmother's handkerchief or a mother's handkerchief um, or even a locket. Lockets are hot in fashion. You know, you could attach a little pin with a locket with maybe pictures of close loved ones who might not be able to have been there on your wedding day. I love using crystals and uh, jewelry with flowers for the bridal bouquet. I think that there's something very wonderful with the dress that works very nicely. And once that look is complete, don't forget to create something equally as eye-catching and magnificent for your bridesmaids. There's always gonna be that one picture where everybody's standing there. And you got the bride, the groom, mom, dad, and the bridal party. You don't want somebody holding a big fuchsia flower and everybody else has ivory. So I always kind of picture that one photo so that it all blends and it's complimentary. Whatever you decide, what's important is that you create beautiful bouquets for you and your bridesmaids that you'll love seeing in your photographs for years to come. To find great florists where you live, visit the local resources pages on getmade.com. Ellen DeGeneres is a true original, but when this cutting edge comedian and talk show host married her longtime partner, Portia de Rossi, they wanted a wedding that was antique and elegant and a bouquet that matched. Celebrity florist Mark Held shows us how he granted their wedding day wish. Helen and Portia's wedding was, was very exciting to do, of course, um, because it was a milestone wedding. Um, and it was great for us to be, to be allowed to be part of that. The colors that they chose were so unique, and I, I love these colors. And I think this is really something that we're going to be seeing now. These are very antique colors. They chose uh, Amnesia Roses, which is uh, an incredible sort of grayish, it's almost a lavender gray rose, very, very uh, old-fashioned looking. Pink antique roses, which are big, fantastic antique garden roses. And then coffee au lait dahlias, which are exciting and beautiful, also a very kind of a musty, musty color. And Estrantia 
from Holland and I was thrilled to be able to use Estrontia because it's a flower that's so rarely used and it's such a cool flower and it photographs so well because it, it has all this little incredible detail in it and it was a perfect bridge between the amnesia roses and this antique hydrangea that they chose. I think it is a feminine uh, look. I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very almost English. It's very uh, almost 19th century in a way. Uh, it, it's it's uh, kind of old fashioned. Um, but when you look at it, it uh, it's exciting to see, especially the, the amnesia roses because no one's ever seen them before. It's a kind of a, a new rose for us and uh, we, we always love to use uh, things that are a little bit unique I think Ellen and Portia were thrilled. It was a stunning look, very dramatic. I think they loved it. To see more celebrity weddings and follow along with brides planning their special day just like you, check out the Real Weddings pages of GetMarried.com. Coming up on Get Married, you want your ceremony to be breathtaking. We've got tips on choosing the right decor for that all-important exchange of vows. And we'll tell you how to get your groom more involved in the planning process. Stay with us. Whether you're in a church or surrounded by nature, you want your ceremony site to be beautiful. The right decor can magnify the joy and intimacy of the moment you and your groom say your vows. Exchanging of vows is one of the most cherished moments you'll share with your groom, family and friends. That's why I think it's incredibly important to create an atmosphere for the ceremony that is special and meaningful to you. The wedding ceremony itself may be ripe with tradition, but your decor doesn't have to be. Your surroundings can provide inspiration for creating a dramatic look to all your guests and set the tone for what's to come. I think the seasons, or nature in general, is a great inspiration. There's a lot of that idea of bringing the trees indoors that I love to do. The same wonderment that you feel when you see a garden full of beautiful flowers, to be able to do that in a room or in an event, I find really exciting. You're seeing a lot of seashells lining the aisle along with rose petals. You're seeing a lot of fall flowers and fall leaves. So when you have a ceremony that's either inside a house of worship or outside of a house of worship, there's a lot of attention being paid to the decor. The chuppah and the altar can be decorated with beautiful greenery. As we're seeing a lot more greenery, we're seeing beautiful flowers, but we're seeing a lot of really interesting textures in foliage. But brides with over-the-top tastes don't have to go over budget to infuse their personality into the decor. The aisle is a great opportunity to lay your personality out there with a the runner. Runners are kind of a funny thing. You can do anything you want on them. So it can really run the gambit of fairy tale wedding, let's just say, which is wonderful and romantic to the extreme where we're doing black runners with crazy butterfly motifs all over them. And that's really fun, is it can represent each bride so dramatically differently. Or we'll make a lasting impression before even stepping a foot down the aisle by creating a grand entrance where your guests and your groom first lay their eyes on you. Everyone decorates the altar, and that's great. Decorate the back of the church. This frames the entrance for the entire wedding party. Many times we'll use large floral. Sometimes we'll even use trees. As everybody passes through, they're framed. Creating the gate at the foot of the aisle was something which we started maybe 10 years ago or so, and I have a lot of brides that love that look, and we built lots of gates since then. In fact, I, I just had an enormous set of gates that are 15 feet tall by 15 feet wide built for a wedding in Missouri. And don't forget about your lighting. It's essential for putting you in the spotlight for your walk down the aisle. A lot of people want to have the aisles lit. So when the bride walks in, she's in her first position, everyone stands up and they look back, and there she is, she's in her first spotlight, and this is when her moment of the day starts. But to make sure your day goes as planned, check with your ceremony site beforehand. Religious venues may have restrictions, so be aware of them before creating your decor. Wherever you have your ceremony, your decor is another opportunity to reflect who you and your groom are as a couple. For more creative ceremony ideas, check out the ideas and decor pages at getmarried.com. When you ask for your groom's input on the wedding plans, does he mumble something like, whatever you like, honey? That may seem like the perfect response, 
except that you want your wedding to be a reflection of the both of you. Here's a few tricks you can try to spark his interest. Getting your groom excited about your wedding planning isn't always the easiest task on your to-do list. But with a bit of creativity and lots of communication, planning your dream day can actually bring you closer together. But how exactly do you get him geared up? A quick tip would be not to force him to start the planning process with you. If you know that your fiance is not into floral design, that's probably not an idea to engage him into. What I usually recommend is doing things that the groom's gonna be interested in, such as the music. Grooms are always interested in the music. So we will do our best to incorporate him into any meetings we have with bands or DJs. Any music choices that we need to make, we'll ask for his opinion as well. Other things that the groom likes, food. Grooms usually like the food, so involve him with the tasting, involve him with the choices, and really the honeymoon. Those are the three major things that grooms tend to be involved with the most. And if cars suit his fancy. Task him with selecting your transportation. Cars are something that guys typically like to look at, especially customized cars, and these limos certainly are customized. With the disco floors and the various interiors and exterior features that they have, it gives the guy the ability to get involved and make his choice and then show it to his fiance. Or even surprise his fiance. We offer a specific service as well called groom planning. We kind of sneak behind the bride talking to the groom. Hey, how do you want to surprise her? What do you want to do? Is there anything that she's mentioned to you that you want seen done? Because not only is it about the bride that day, but it's also about the groom because they're both stepping into this for the rest of their lives. Stepping into this takes a bit of organization. I have never met a groom who had a binder. I have only met one bride who came to the meeting without a binder. But in his head, the groom needs to have his own binder. Binder or not, he can still contribute to the task at hand. I've had some grooms that were in charge of the budget. And so they created wonderful spreadsheets. They kept track of all the expenses. And especially when the couple is paying for the wedding themselves, which nowadays is very common, But some things are better in pairs, and doing things together means a stronger bond. One of the best things that I ever see happen is for the bride and groom to work out together. They really actually form a bond that they don't know necessarily about ahead of time. Throughout a fitness class or throughout some kind of a training program, you're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna get tired, but you're gonna also reach goals, and when you do that together, it's fantastic. And you might just be surprised at how much he enjoys that togetherness. I just got married and I really enjoyed planning things with my fiance as we were leading up to our wedding. It gives you a sense of doing it together, you're making it yourself. So whether your guy is DIY or not, remember that communication is key. Make him feel welcomed into the process. And you're off to a great start for both before and after the big day. For more relationship advice, go to the expert advice section on the planning pages of GetMarried.com. Up next on Get Married, I'll give you the scoop on an elegant Colorado wedding I design. And you'll see the latest fashions for fabulous full-figured brides. Creating a unique wedding that your guests will remember often means doing something unexpected and one of a kind. In my book, Wedding Chic, I have over 1,000 ideas to inspire you. Now, who says you have to wear a white dress for a wedding? For this winter wedding in the snowy Colorado mountains, against the backdrop of fresh snow, our bride wore a cranberry red dress and came up the mountain on a horse-driven sleigh. In their room, each guest received a welcome gift package which included everything from sun protection to glove warmers for the ski days. Guests also received a personalized embroidered bag with their name on it to have their black tie shoes sent up the mountain to await their arrival at the ceremony since they came up the mountain in snow boots. The entrance to the ceremony was flanked with columns and urns made out of ice. Guests entered the ceremony area from a hallway that was lined with beautiful hurricane candles that were cuffed in wintry red roses and hypericum berries. The bride and groom got married in a tent in front of a window and under a wreath of red roses, winter greens and velvet ribbons. For the dinner service, the buffets and bars were all fashioned out of ice as well. 
The final piece de resistance was the wedding cake. A white stacked wedding cake wrapped with red iced ribbon and red iced cranberries. Such rich details found in each element of this wedding transformed it into an unexpected luxurious winter wonderland. For more of my tips on having a fabulous wedding, check out my page on getmarried.com. And to get your very own autographed copy of my book, Wedding Chic, visit the shopping page of getmarried.com. Most women are blessed with some curves, but for larger brides, finding that perfect gown can be a frustrating experience. Designers like Bar Lux are taking notice. They've launched a line of gowns tailor-made for plus-size brides. A beautiful, blushing bride comes in every shape and size. So why doesn't her dress? Well, Bar Lux, the hottest new designer on the runway, found a way to give each and every bride her perfect fit. With the style, grace, and craftsmanship of a couture piece, luxury and beauty becomes this bride. Bara means rose in Japanese. And a rose is beautiful in any size. From 16W to 28W, the full-figured woman is covered by this couture collection. When I look at the magazine in here, the models wearing the small size, most of the models are wearing almost the same types of wedding gowns and look at on the street there are many large figure people so I just try to make the wedding gown for them I see a designer who took his talent and his understanding of lines and silhouettes and put together combinations that really accentuates the body and it was done in a way to accentuate the best assets of that woman who tries that dress on. Trying the dress on is a key part of their process. It's very important to me that all brides, regardless to their size, have a wonderful bridal buying experience. And you can't have that if you only have size 10, size 8 samples for a bride to try on. So it's very significant that now, finally, women of fuller figures will be able to go in and try on a sample, zip that baby up, sashay around the fitting room, just like a size 8 or 4 in her bridal gown, and be able to walk away from the salon with a very clear picture of how she's going to look on her wedding day. And when shopping, options are a must. A cornerstone to the idea of couture for fabulously full-figured women. We have included halters, which a lot of full-figured brides haven't been able to wear. And we've provided a cut that gives them coverage right underneath the underarm. We also have the traditional sweetheart neckline, which is very flattering on anyone. We have umpire waist, which is a beautiful silhouette for those who may not have a waistline, but this gives you a silhouette that you didn't know you had. The Bar Lux full-figured woman wears fabulous fabrics as well. We have 100% silk chiffons. We even have a beautiful silk jacquard. No matter the cut, the lines, the fabric, or the figure, what's most important is to give all brides something that they can look smashing in on their wedding day. To see more Bar Lux designs, check out the gown gallery at getmarried.com. Don't move, you're about to see some very cool items for your wedding. Back in a moment. What's hot right now for weddings? Trendy newlywed gear. Toast to your new life together with these bride and groom champagne glasses. At four and a half inches tall in size, each glass comes with a white bow tied around the base. Perfect for your first toast as husband and wife, this special glassware can also be used to celebrate your first anniversary. Add some flair to your honeymoon baggage with these bride and groom luggage tags. 
Each tag is sold separately and features a clear strap, rounded corners, and space for fill-in-the-blank information. And not to worry, each tag is sold in sets of six so that all your bags will wear your new title. Get a good night's sleep with these together at last Mr. and Mrs. pillowcases. Embroidered with fun Mr. and Mrs. designs, each pillowcase is made up of a special cotton and polyester blend. So whether it's your honeymoon or any night after, you can rest knowing dreams come true. You can find all of these newlywed items and more on the What's Hot and shopping pages of GetMarried.com. You're excited about sharing your life with your fiance. Now you can share that joy and your planning adventures on Get Married's Blogger Brides. Get Married's Blogger Brides is the online community where our expert star bloggers and brides-to-be blog daily about tips, trends and cool wedding finds. You can also make friends and get your own ideas out there. So make sure you visit Get Married's Blogger Brides. I'm Colin Cowley. We'll see you right here next time.